JM Financial, one of India's leading, most respected broking houses, also one of the favorite parties when it comes to IPOs. Primary markets are hot and none better than now to get the big boss of JM Financial, JM Vishal Kampani. He's very media reticent. Very rarely do you see him give an interview, but we at ET now convinced him. Here he is in conversation with my colleague Ajay Sharma. I think that, you know, we've seen a negative credit cycle mm. for a long time in India. You've seen issues with the PSU banks in the last decade, followed by demonetization, which created some issues for microfinance lenders, uh, the small finance banks, followed by ILFS, which created a havoc in the NBFC liability side, which flowed through on the asset side. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a couple of failures. So there has been some kind of a discord Right? whether it's regulatory, whether it's trust on the liability side, and how is the sector performing. And I'm very pleased to say that as a sector, we've only come out stronger, much stronger. Today it is actually the NBFCs where you see a lot of innovation. The NBFCs who have reached deep reach into India, NBFCs are bringing a lot of new to credit customers, right? and they're actually fueling a large part of the credit growth. Even if you split apart the growth on the banking side, mm -hmm. a lot of the incremental growth in lending is to NBFCs. So I think it is a very important sector, very core to actually attaining our growth in GDP, mm -hmm. our PM's vision of five trillion. The NBFC sector will play a very, very important role. We're extremely bullish on it. Uh, we've kind of come out untouched. You know, our ratings are completely intact. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a model which is 50% lending and 50% fees and commission. Uh, our lending book has performed very well in the last five years. We took adequate amount of provisions. And now we are looking to a phenomenal growth curve in the next three to five years. Okay. Just year on year last year, we've grown our book at upwards of 30%. Uh, I also observed that though ever since you came in on the board to 2016 onwards, if I'm not wrong, there have been multiple occasions I've read your focus on profitability-led growth, not just the top-line growth. So within that piece, when I see your latest results or even the annual results as a whole, the year gone by, you've crossed 700 crore. And when you say integrated approach for building the business from here on, how would be the mix of profitability be and what are the levers which you have to press to reduce the cyclicality component also yeah. one end of your business has? So that's a great question. So, you know, if you go back a little longer in history, if you just go back more than a decade ago, our lending businesses contributed less than 10% of PAT. So we've already got that number to around 50, 55% of PAT. In fact, almost touching 60. So that itself reduces cyclicality massively. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is because 40, 45% of our business is directly or indirectly related to capital markets. Even in that business, we are seeing a shift. We are adding more wealth management products. More right? fee-based. More fee-based, more, more granular, Sticky. more annuity, okay. not linked to one large client who pays us a big fee and then is not giving us business the next year, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, and I think we've already achieved that. That transformation is already achieved. So our revenues in our investment bank are a lot more granular on the client side as well as the product side. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you look at our six month numbers, a lot of uh, analysts expected that because the capital markets will be slow, the numbers will come down. But our debt capital market franchise, our wealth management franchise produced fantastic returns in the last six months, both in terms of origination of new product and distribution. So what's happened is that the cyclicality within that business has reduced because of a more larger, broader client base and more products. Now on the lending side, we are in a very unique, unique position. See, our, our debt to equity is very low, right? So we are earning almost three and a half to 3.75% ROA. And our debt equity is 1.2 times. There's huge scope for that to go so up. So we can easily take that. I mean, we don't even need to take it to where Crystal or uh, Ikra, our rating agencies allow us to go to four or five times. We don't even need to get there, right? We get to two and a half to three times and we are banging at 16 to 18% ROE. Talk to us about the longer term point which you said, 10 year. You see a very good runway for all the businesses. That's where you're focusing on. What are those signs? Because nobody else or many, very few organizations are 
plugged into the corporate uh, ecosystem so well, as well as the big HNI community where flows are coming. Uh, what makes you so confident of yeah, that? Yeah, so I think a lot of things, right? One is Indian corporates, mm. they are in the pink of health. Okay. You go back and we've been dealing with these corporates. I mean, since I was literally, I joined Correct. work and I've been dealing in with corporates. In your cradle, I would say. So, you know, they are in the pink of health. Mm -hmm. Leverage levels, all time low, right? Just the business outlook the kind of talent they've recruited to be able to grow, whether it's, you know, greenfield or brownfield, just their understanding of global markets, the orientation to growing exports, right? The orientation to global trade, the orientation on costs, the orientation on integration, right, among their businesses. Mm -hmm. So when I talk to corporates, I think we have these two, three thousand companies in India, which I think are some of the finest companies in the world. The universe of cli your clients in a way. Absolutely. No, Other no, ways also. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have five, six hundred clients, but we're targeting these two, three thousand. Sure, the potential Second, a lot of the companies that are going public today, they're largely private equity invested. Mm -hmm. Just think about it simply, right? Private equity has put more than a hundred billion dollars into this country in the last six, seven years. All of that's going to come for harvesting. Private equity is looking at 20% growth, right? So a hundred billion dollars compounding at 20%. Over six to seven years, it's two hundred billion dollars worth of new companies, no. which are not even listed. They are all going to list over the next four to five years. So you are seeing a an, a U.S.-like phenomenon of the seventies and eighties, and a China-like phenomenon of the nineties and the two thousands to happen in India in the two thousand twenties and thirties. And look at the SIP flows. I mean, it's almost hitting $2 billion a month at times. Very steady at 10 to 12,000 crores. So this is like unbelievable. So, this is the golden age for so our if, business here. So if, if they are saying that India is a shining star right now compared to so much of gloom and doom across the world, it is justified that Indian markets are trading at much more premium valuations because of the superior earnings growth Indian corporates are sh showing up right now. See, I'll give you a simple example. Just look at the FMCG and consumer space in India, mm. right? It's been expensive for 14, 15 years now. But the companies have done very well. That's an interesting take then from Vishal Kampani. He does not speak to the media a lot, but here he is on ET now saying that this is the golden age for India and that Indian corporates are in the pink of health.